Welcome back to the channel, and today I'm gonna to be showing you a destructive way of tearing cloth. Now, just so you understand, if you're not familiar with the terminology, destructive in this context means that we're not doing this procedurally. Um, once you cut the object that you're tearing, um, it's kind of like a permanent deal, right? You're actually destroying the or modifying the topology. Now, this is really messy, and ideally you would do this procedurally, but in case you wanted to know of a destructive way of tearing cloth and blender. This is one way to do it. It has its limitations, it's not perfect, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it anyway. So we'll mainly focus on making this and then I'll quickly just go through the materials and I'll show you where you can get this material already made. You can just drag it into blender and you know we'll just set up a camera. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be putting this blend file on my Patreon. So those of you supporting the channel on Patreon, if you're not, you can also check it out in the description. It's a great way to support the channel and you get access to tons of really interesting resources and blend files. So yeah, let's jump into it. I'm sure you guys are gonna like learning how to do cloth tearing in Blender. So with a new scene open up in Blender, I'm using Blender 4.5. We're gonna get started by just selecting everything in our scene and we'll press delete on the keyboard and we're just gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options. Let's add in a plane and we're gonna go into edit mode. And inside of edit mode with all of this active, you're just gonna press S and then two. So S two and hit enter. That just scales it up two times, right? We're then gonna go ahead, right click with everything active and go subdivide. And then come over here to your subdivide tab. And you know, let's see what we're gonna go for. Um, 10 is the max you can drag it to, but you could type in something like 22 or maybe even 25. Um, I'm gonna just see where I wanna go to. Um, maybe I'll go to 32. I think that'll be fine. You can go even higher if you want but I'm just gonna leave it at 32. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead to our um, data properties. And what we wanna do is we're gonna just go Shift Alt and then you can left click next to each edge on the outside to select it. So now we have the whole edge selected. We can just go over here to our vertex group and hit plus and this is double clicking. Let's just call this border. And let's just go ahead and assign this. So all of these that are active are now assigned to that border group. You can just go Alt A to deselect and you can test it by selecting it and going select. And you should see that's all active. It's always good to just make sure. So we're gonna um, tap back out. We're gonna go over to our physics. So let's just give this a cloth and let's just scroll down to the shape. And under the pin group, let's just select that border. So now if we go over to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can see the cloth sags here like that simulating. So what we could do is we can actually go Shift A, we can go to our Mesh Options and add in a UV sphere. Um, I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and go S to scale it and about this much and I'm gonna tab back out. Now, the reason I'm doing that inside of edit mode, so I don't have to, if I do it in object mode, each time I'd have to go Control A and just apply the scale. So you could do that if you wanted to. I just prefer to avoid that and just scale it inside of edit mode. So anyway, in object mode, right click, go Shade Smooth and you could just go ahead and give that a sub division surface if you wish to, okay? So what we could do is we can come here to frame one. We can select our sphere. We're gonna go G, Z and move it up. And with it selected, you can just press I and that's gonna insert a keyframe. You can actually see this, this yellow keyframe here now. And then I'm gonna to come to frame 50 and I'm gonna go G, Z and move it down to the bottom here. And once again, I'm gonna press I to insert a keyframe. Then I'm gonna come up to frame 60 and I'm gonna press I again. So now you're gonna have a bit of a hold for 10 seconds. And then I'm just gonna to come to frame 100. And then I'm just gonna grab this first keyframe here and go Shift D to duplicate on the timeline and just drag it to frame, whoops, 100. I was at 110, I meant 100, there we go. So at frame 100, and I'm only gonna make the animation 150 frames long, like that. Okay, so if we now go to frame um, one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see this, like that, pretty cool. Okay, so we wanna also select our sphere. We just wanna go over to our physics and let's just give it a collision and that way it can actually interact with our cloth. Now, obviously it's just gonna bounce right through it because um, we haven't done the cut thing yet. And this in and of itself kind of looks like a pretty cool sort of ghostly effect, but I think we can um, make it look better with the tear. So let's go ahead. What we're gonna do when it comes to frame one, we're just gonna hit the space bar and we're gonna let it simulate as far as it'll go before it rips through. So I'm gonna go to about there. Okay, you can see there. So for me, that's frame 26. It may be a little bit different for you, but it should be somewhere between 20 and 30 for you. So somewhere around there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the cloth when you're there, right? Just before it rips through. And on that frame, you're gonna go over to your modifiers and to your cloth, you're gonna to come to the drop down and you're gonna apply it as a shape key. 
Okay, and now you can see it disappears, but what you wanna do is go over to your object data properties and under your shape key here, you now have your basis, which is your original, and now you have the cloth. So if you click on a cloth, you now have this value slider, so you can drag it to create that shape key effect like this. Okay, we're gonna take advantage of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fake the cloth simulation with that shape key. So let's come over here and just as our sphere is coming close to making contact with, it might be easier to see in the front view. So just as it's coming very close to making contact with that um, mesh. So for me, that's frame 18 or around 17, 18, maybe a little bit different. You're gonna come here and with the cloth selected with a value of zero, you're gonna click on this little button here to animate that property and it goes yellow. And then you're gonna drag through, and for us, um, let's, just, let's just drag this um, zero value all the way up to one. Okay, so um, for me, I'm just gonna go to the front view. Um, so the ball matches up at about 26 for me. So what I'm gonna do at frame 26 with a value of one, I'm gonna come and hit this animate property again, and now it has a value of one. So what's happening between frame 19 and frame 26, it's activating that shape key. So what we have now is this. So if I drag here to frame one and hit the space bar, you can see it kind of looks like it's affecting that. Now, you could always grab these keyframes and drag them around a bit just till it kind of matches up the way you want. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You could always um, move, move the um, keyframes around. We just kind of roughly want it happening like that. So now that we have that done, Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and we're gonna make sure to select the basis over here. And we're gonna select the cloth, we're gonna tab into edit mode. And what we wanna do is we can go up to our top orthographic view. I'm gonna go to my edge select option here and I'm just gonna enable the X-ray. You can kind of see where the ball is in the top view here. Okay, so I might, I might just turn off the X-ray because I kind of know it's in the middle here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over here in edit mode to the cut tools and I'm gonna go ahead and just get the knife tool over here and I'm just gonna go ahead and click and I'm gonna drag through just kind of cutting across like this and maybe to here and then I'm gonna hit enter and then I'm just gonna come over here just to the move tool and hold in shift and I can just select the little bits in between that didn't get cut just to kind of complete it like so so you can see I just kind of have a cut going through like this and with them all active like that now, you can see it's a continuous cut. I'm just gonna press V and that's just gonna cut it and I'll just right click and you can see it snaps back like that. And then what I can do is I can go back, deselect everything, I can go back to the knife tool. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna click and drag and I'll just kind of cut through like this. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit enter and anywhere where it didn't cut properly, I can just come here with the move tool again, I can hold in shift and just select the in between bits like so. There we go. So you can see we have a continuous line going through here, maybe just around here. There we go. So you can see there we have it and I'm gonna press V just to cut that like so and I'm gonna let go. And then you can do this as many times as you want. So I'll get the knife tool again and I'll just maybe make it vertex in this case. I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna cut through here like this. So just kind of cutting through to this section here. I'm gonna hit enter. You can do it as random as you want. And then once again, I'm gonna press V just to cut that. And then I'll just get the knife tool again over here. Maybe slice it across here like this. And with that selected, I'm just gonna press V again just to cut it. And now we have all of these cuts like that. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back into object mode. I'm gonna go just to the first frame here, somewhere around here, and I'm gonna go to my modifiers. Actually not the modifiers, let's go to the physics, there we go. And we're gonna give it a cloth again. And we're just gonna scroll down to the shape and under the shape in the pin group, we're just gonna give it the border again. So if we were to go to frame one and hit the spacebar, you can see this happens, which is fine, but it doesn't happen at the right point. So what we can do, we can cheat. We can just come up here to the point, so about 27, and at about frame 27 for me, that's when the shape key kind of reaches its end here before it was supposed to tear. So what I'm gonna do with the cloth selected, I'm gonna go over to the physics. I'm gonna make sure to go up 
and just search around here. You're gonna see a drop down option for the cache. So here it is, it's actually just above the shape. And I wanna start it at 27, okay? And I want it to end at 150 because that's how long my end frame is over here. So that's the length of the animation. So now the cloth won't kick in until after the shape key here has stretched like this. But only at that point, it's gonna tear through like that, as you can see. Have a look at that. So just check it out again. It's gonna go through and then tear and then comes back up. Pretty cool, okay? And what we're gonna do, we're also gonna just come here to our cache and we'll just bake it so it actually bakes this in. There we go. And then let's go over to our render settings. Let's change it from EV to cycles. If you have a GPU, I always recommend you use it. And then under your render max samples, I'm just gonna go with 35. You can go higher if you want, but I do have denoising enabled. And for this, it should work just fine. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our front view. We're gonna go shift A, just add in a camera. And you can move the camera back. And if you want to, in your front view, you can go shift A, you can just go to mesh options and add in a plane and then rotate it 90 degrees, scaling it up. And this is optional, but you can just kind of like add in a simple backdrop like this, if you want. And then if you really wanted to as well, you could go shift A, just go add in a plane tab into edit mode and then you go I to insert it a little bit and click, go X and delete those faces. And now you have sort of like this border that you can kind of scale up. You can extrude it up like so. And now you just have sort of like this fancy decorative edge if you want it to. You can even give it a bevel by going control B. Um, that's optional. So I'm just gonna quickly add that in. Um, so now I kind of have like this frame. Um, if you wanted to, you could move your camera more back to kind of get more of this. Um, it's really up to you how you want to approach this. Um, the camera placement really isn't something that I tend to focus on too much because it's more of a personal preference. From here, you can go Shift A, you can just go to your light options, add in something like an area light. And for me, I'm just gonna go to my light properties, give it a strength of 300. Just increase that size. And now I'm gonna go Z and go rendered. And I might just have this kind of coming off from the side over here. Rotate another camera here. Not a camera, a, a light. Um, so once again, lighting, personal preference thing. You guys can light it however you want. Um, but one thing that really makes this look cool is a nice texture. So I'm just gonna go over to the internet and I've just typed in here HDRI Haven. You can also type in Polyhaven. Uh, I think it used to be called HDRI Haven, then I changed it to Polyhaven. And under Polyhaven, if you go to the website, um, they have this assets drop down, and you can go to textures. And by the way, this is completely free. And then you can go over to the fabrics dropdown and you can choose whichever fabric you want. Now I think this Hessian, Hessian here looks really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that and you can just click download, which I've already done. And here you can see it's in my downloads. I've just gone ahead and extracted the zip and inside of there is the textures and the blend file. But the really cool thing is if you now go in back to your scene, you can go file, you can go append and I'm gonna go to my downloads. And then there's that extracted file and inside you'll see the blend file. You can double click on it. You can go to material and then click on the Hessian and then go ahead and append it. Now you can click on your cloth and you can just go over to your materials, come to the drop down and give it that Hessian. And now if you go Z and you go rendered, you can see it's already set up for us. From here, it's up to you. You can select your ball. You can give it any material you want, any color any sort of surface or roughness. You can make it metallic, you can make it shiny or rough. This looks really, really cool. I'm also just gonna go ahead under the render um, properties. I'm just gonna go down and enable motion blur. Makes it look really good, but it will make it a bit more rent, um, processor intensive, so longer render time. But I think it is well worth it. And I'm just gonna grab the background and I might just give that a material and kind of make it dark. Um, but yeah, the main thing I was focusing on here really was just teaching you guys how to actually um, make this animation, right? With the tearing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pause the shot and I'll go render and I'll just render the image. And there we have it. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I'm not gonna show you how to render this out as an animation just simply because I've covered that many times. Um, you should already know how to do that and there's a ton of tutorials showing you how to do it. It's really easy. Um, you just render the frames out and you can compile them together or you can just render it out directly as an MP4. 
But yeah, this is the tutorial and I will be uploading this to my Patreon. So those of you supporting the channel, you'll get access to this blend file. I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.